I hear a lot of folks switching to plant-based diets and then going, oh my God, I felt horrible. I, I, I oh no, that's not a diet for me. Mm-hmm. And it's sometimes I wonder, did they had the same experience as I did, which is what I had. Once I started soy, my night sweats gonna, uh, went away. My, um, my hot flashes went away. But soon enough, I'm starting to have a huge patch of, um, it, it looked like a uh, uh, hive on my tie. Mm. And um, I was checked for um, shingles. It was in shingles. Um, I went back to my doctor. She did all the labs for uh, lupus, for uh, MS, all the autoimmune panel. Nothing shows. I was sent to an allergologist. Um, they did all the skin pricks. I had like 170 needle sticks on my back. Nothing showed. It showed I'm allergic to dust mite and horse dandruff. Um, I wasn't suspecting soy. I was not. <laughs> so, um, one day I run out of the organic soybeans that I was using. So I wasn't using anything processed because I can't eat anything processed. I, I wasn't using anything unorganic. I was buying organic soybeans and I run out of them. And the, the store where I used to buy it was on back order. So I said, you know, I'm just going to have to wait. And two weeks later, all my symptoms are gone. On the Healthy Human Revolution podcast, Dr. Lori Marbus interviews nutrition and lifestyle medicine experts and extraordinary guests whose informative and inspiring stories will empower you with the knowledge to transform your life and health. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Dr. Lori Marbus, and today I'd like to welcome Monica Siskelly. How are you today? I'm doing very good, Dr. Marbus. How are you? Great. Thank you so much for joining us and your willingness to share a really interesting story. I think a lot of people actually will connect to. Mm -hmm. So let's start back to, you know, kind of how you shared your story with me and, you know, coming to the United States and seeing some things that were a little bit differently and maybe your background a little. Right, right. So um, I did grow up in Eastern Europe. And as I shared with you, um, my mom used to cook all the meals from scratch. We grown our vegetables in the garden. Pretty much everything was organic. Not a healthy diet, though, because we are Hungarians. So <laughs> um, a lot of animal products and sausages and, you know, what goes with it. But um, I, I was... I was healthy. I uh, didn't have any gui- digestive issues, any uh, health issues. My family was fairly, fairly uh, healthy. Um, there were no cholesterol issues, heart, uh, cardiovascular issues. Uh, there were no diabetes. Um, Dad, unfortunately, did got diagnosed with lung cancer, but he was a smoker. So, you know, that's just Eastern European habits. So uh, when I was 26 years old, after finishing medical school in Romania, I moved to the United States and um, there becomes my journey on on a different continent. Um, I had already a three month old baby and my husband was a physician as well. So we moved and we were planning on getting our licensure and, you know, raising our child and live happily ever after. Uh, chasing the American dream. And things took a, took a, a turn overnight. I became a single parent. Mm-hmm. And um, I did, um, I had to make a decision. I had to provide for my child. And taking the licensure exams um, would have been a long process. So I decided to go into nursing, mm-hmm. which is still, you know, medical field and doing what I love. And um, I did work for 12 years in the, um, in the nursing department as uh, in an infectious diseases nursing department. And then Perfect. years ago, I, um, I moved over to administration. Mm. So tell us a little bit about your, as you're making this journey, your, your GI system is also making its own journey and right. how, it's, how it's speaking right. to you. 
<laughs> so um, going back to, to uh, Europe, I was healthy. I never had any digestive problems. I actually, I used to say I could, I could probably uh, digest a truck if I would have to. It was robust. I, I never had any issues, not even food poisoning or anything like that. So I moved to the United States and of course I get uh, um, very uh, fast acquainted with the fast food industry and working as a nurse and being a single mom, uh, it was easier to just go eat out and uh, forget about what mom taught me to cook your own food. Mm. And um, slightly, sh surely enough, I started getting gastric upset, bloating, you know, unusual symptoms that I, I was never acquainted with. And um, also around 2006, seven, I had uh, two knee surgeries. Uh, I had a damaged cartilage from exercising. <laughs> And uh, my surgeon told me not to run anymore because um, that would greatly damage the cartilage in the knee. So I, I switched over to lifting weights and I, I got acquainted with the bodybuilding industry and the protein powders and uh, protein bars. And um, that's when my digestive problems started really coming to the front. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, it was anything from bloating and indigestion and heartburn. And at some point, um, I saw an, an advertisement on TV for, for Splenda. It was advertised as a natural, um, natural sh sugar substitute, of course. And... Um, I was so happy to see that. No calories. Oh my God. Tell me which one, young woman wouldn't go for it. I was drinking a lot of coffee at the time because I was working long nursing hours. So I started using it in my coffee. And the symptoms didn't come up right away, but insidiously, I started feeling worse and worse and worse. So I got to the point, I actually lost about 20 pounds from I'm five, seven and weighing 130, 130 pounds. So I, I didn't really have much weight to lose. Mm -hmm. And um, people around me, especially the doctors and nurses I was working with, they're starting noticing and, and remarking like, you don't look good. Is everything okay with you? So I started sharing my problems that I'm, I'm having bloating and digestion problems. And I'm going to tell you, honestly, at the beginning, I was labeled as <laughs> you know, anorexic and oh my God, young women, she just wants to lose weight. And I heard those comments behind my back. So eventually I do end up seeing a gastroenterologist. I am diagnosed with Crohn's disease after a colonoscopy. And then uh, three months later on therapy, on, uh, I remember I was taking eight capsules a day don't quite remember the medication though, but um, I wasn't feeling better. So I went back, they did another colonoscopy with a biopsy and it turns out it wasn't Crohn's disease. Um, IBS, um, you know, all young women have it, you know, it's hormones, it's stress, it's uh, what have you. I was sent home and I was not feeling well. So I said to myself, if I'm going to have to live with this the rest of my life, I'd rather educate myself on it. And I started reading up. And I remember I bought this book, um, The Gut, The Second Brain, written by two mm -hmm. physicians. And um, I found aspartame in that book as being a trigger for IBS. And... Um, I said, you know, I, I, I don't use aspartame. So I go in my kitchen and pull out everything in my cupboards. And sure enough, there was stuff with aspartame in it. And one morning I'm making my coffee, I'm putting my little yellow packets in my coffee and it literally hit me like, what are you? So I went and immediately Googled Splenda or Sucralose and there came a torrent of testimonials and, and stories of people getting sick. And so I stopped using it, of course, immediately. Right. And all my symptoms went away. Right. All my symptoms. Um, however, I cannot say that uh, I, 
I return to my usual state of health, I start becoming sensitive to foods. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting to become allergic to certain foods I'm eating. I would, my face would turn red. I would get uh, rashes. I would wake up with a swollen face and hands and feet. So um, it was the time when I realized that not everything that's sold in grocery stores, it's safe to eat. Mm -hmm. And I, I did go ahead and signed up for a nutritional um, class online. So I do have a nutrition uh, certification. And uh, of course, I learned the usual things, you know, eat healthy, chicken, fish, turkey. And I was doing that. I was doing that. So my gastric issues at this point are uh, mild. I would still get bloating. I would still get in uh, indigestion, um, pain. A lot of times I would... I, I, I usually say that I have a boa constrictor in my stomach because my vowels were just going and, and, and loud and you could literally hear my peristaltis. Mm. <laughs> and um, dad gets diagnosed with lung cancer in 2015. Mm. And he, it's, it was a late stage lung cancer. Surgery was not recommended. Uh, they sent him home on palliative care and once again, I'm diving in the literature to see how I can help my, my father. As I knew, of course, I knew it was a terminal diagnosis, um, but I wanted to, to be able to, to, to offer some solace for him, you know, as, especially having a medical education. It's painful to see your parent dying. And um, I read and read and, you know, of course, the healthy nutrition is one of the first recommendations for anybody who's diagnosed with cancer. So um, I dived into the healthy nutrition again and accidentally I trip over What the Health on Netflix. And I watched the documentary and Lori, I can, I can, I remember the day like it was yesterday, my jaw dropped. I mean, it was information that was so new to me. Mm. I mean, what do you mean eating chicken is not healthy? <laughs> so at that point I realized, oh my God, this could be helping me as well. And I actually turned to a plant-based nutrition overnight. I cleaned out my entire kitchen. Um, I put my dad on a plant-based diet and um, he did survive three years past uh, stage four wow. cancer diagnosis. So I am not going to say it was because of the uh, plant-based diet, but I'm sure it contributed. Sure. And uh, his, uh, his demise was easy. He literally went down the hill three months before he passed away. Until then, he didn't have pain. He, he, his quality of life was good. Wow. Well, unfortunately, we did lose him, which is um, inevitable with uh, lung cancer. Right. But I continue my trajectory on a plant-based diet, and I felt amazing from mm. the day. I'm, I'm sure it's mental as well, because it's, it's such a new world. And yeah. uh, seeing all the recipes and the beans and the lentils, which I haven't touched be until then, because, oh my God, they're carbohydrates, right? <laughs> So um, I was doing really good. And I even started sharing with friends and family members. Um, my, my mother went plant-based. My sister, who lives in Germany, went plant-based. And I'm seeing all this um, great stories around me. I had friends. Um, I have a, a dear friend who lives near to me. And um, he was on the USC uh, kidney transplant program. So we went out one, one day hiking and I was telling them about my new diet and, and look at the science about it. He's, uh, he's an engineer, so, you know, he's an educated person. He didn't say much, but next day he sat down with his wife and said, you know, we should try this. Mm -hmm. And they did. And three months later, when he went back to USC to have his labs drawn, because he was monitored every three months, his kidney function was better. Wow. And six months later, his kidney function was better. It got to the point his kidney function improved 40%. Oh, my goodness. And they were evaluating, should we take him off the transplant list? Should we not? So, um, of course, he was um, 
I want to say scared you know, that if they're being taken off the transplant list. So what he would do one week before he would go in to have his labs drawn, he would go back eating meat and his kidney function would fail. So uh, all the way until he got to the transplant, he did have the transplant last year in March. It was successful and immediately went back to plant-based diet. Him and his wife both, they're doing fantastic. Wow. It's, it's, it's one of my dear stories, and, and, and I do have um, their permission to share, of course, no names. But um, so we are looking into about a year, me being plant based. My energy level was just off the roof. <laughs> I, used, <laughs> I used to say if I could bottle my energy, I would probably make a good chunk of money off of it. I get up at five o'clock in the morning, I go to the gym, I come home, I go to work, I work eight, 10 hours, pretty stressful shifts. And, you know, um, managing a hospital infectious diseases department is a chunk. Mm-hmm. And then I come home and I take my dog out for walks, sometimes five miles. Now we're slowing down because she's nearing nine years old, but she's in great shape. <laughs> and then uh, sit down and do my work and, and s- go to sleep at 10 o'clock at night and next day do everything. And I'm nearing 47. So Uh (laughs) it's Uh not, um, I mean, I, I, I wanted to say I feel more, I feel more energetic than I felt in my Uh twenties. However, there comes a point where I'm seeing an OBGYN, of course, you know, mid forties, you're starting to be premenopausal and by all means, I wanted to avoid uh, HRT. And she said, you know, well, you're plant-based, you should probably start incorporating soy into your diet, which I had not until that point. Yeah. And um, I said, yeah, this, should, this is a great idea. I, I should probably introduce soy into my diet. Um, as also, she recommended red lentils. Oh. Um, very good for uh, maintaining um, uh, estrogen levels, of course, from plant-based sources, right. which I did. And there comes another interesting story in my, my trajectory, in, in my experience with a plant-based diet, which is why I wanted to share with you, because I hear a lot of folks switching to plant-based diets and then going, oh my God, I felt horrible. I, I, I oh no, that's not a diet for me. Mm-hmm. And it's sometimes I wonder did they had the same experience as I did, which is what I had. Once I started soy, my night sweats gonna, uh, went away. My, um, my hot flashes went away. But soon enough, I'm starting to have a huge patch of, um, it, it looked like a uh, uh, hive on my tie. Mm. And um, I was checked for um, shingles. It was in shingles. Um, I went back to my doctor. She did all the labs for uh, lupus, for uh, MS, all the autoimmune panel, nothing shows. I was sent to an allergologist. Um, They did all the skin pricks. I had like 170 needle sticks on my back. Nothing showed. It showed I'm allergic to dust mite and horse dandruff. Um, I wasn't suspecting soy. I was not. (laughs) Um, one day I run out of the organic soybeans that I was using. So I wasn't using anything processed because I can't eat anything processed. I, I wasn't using anything unorganic. I was buying organic soybeans and I run out of them. And the, the store where I used to buy it was on back order. So I said, you know, I'm just going to have to wait. And two weeks later, all my symptoms are gone. Hmm. All of them, which were fatigue. I I started coming down with this um, unexplainable tiredness. Mm -hmm. And my IBS came back. Uh, I was having this rashes coming off and on, which was weird. That's why nobody could really point the finger at something because it would come and it would go. And I even ended up in urgent care one day. I was covered in hives and nobody could figure it out. And Turns out it was soy. So Mm -hmm. I went back to my doctor and I said, you know, I stopped two weeks ago eating soy and all my symptoms went away. And she said, oh my God, it was soy. (laughs) But it didn't show on labs. I 
I didn't have that proof. So I wonder sometimes when somebody says, you know, I did start a plant-based diet and I didn't feel good. I wonder, are they underlying food allergies, food sensitivities? Right. I think there's probably definitely food intolerances and or SIBO as well. A lot of that bloating and the diarrhea, constipation stuff that people get. And you have to do a a bit of like you, you almost did inadvertently with an elimination diet. So I did. um, yeah, I did. That's usually how I did. Once I would wake up with a swollen face or hives or whatever, I would eliminate, including the soy, but not more than two to three days because mm. I was feeling so good otherwise on the soy. So right. uh, I never stayed off the soy for two two weeks until I ran out of it. And sure mm. enough. So, okay, I'm allergic or intolerant to soy. But that doesn't mean I'm going to to give up my plant-based diet. Right. It just went on, you know. I mean, there's so many other beans and lentils and so many other wonderful plants that you can eat. And that's what I also do. You know, I take a recipe. There's another um, nutritional yeast I, I, I can't tolerate. My face swells up. I tried four types of them. I tried organic, non-organic, fortified, unfortified. Every single time. I would have a swollen face and swollen hands and swollen feet. So I said, you know, yeast is not for me. And turns out I'm also reacting to fermented foods. So it must be a yeast intolerance, you know? So having all this food intolerances and allergies, I started reading up on SIBO myself. And I said, wait a minute, I had IBS for 10 years. Um, What if, it's SIBO and that's what's causing because it's so highly linked to food intolerances. Mm -hmm. So a month ago when we got in contact, I actually uh, saw a gastroenterologist and I did get a referral to Dr. Pimentel at Cedar sinai He's the specialist on SIBO. Unfortunately with the coronavirus uh, pandemic, um, they closed the lab. So I'm gonna have to wait for it to go in to get tested, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. Right, right. I don't know if I will ever be able to tolerate soy. I don't know, even, even right. you know, treating SIBO. I don't know. But regardless, my life goes on plant-based without soy. It's not right. such a big deal, you know? Right. And um, Well, that's a good point to bring out, though, you know, to people. It doesn't mean that you can't continue right. a plant-based diet. You just need to be wary especially if there's any autoimmune history. A good friend of mine, Dr. Chris Miller, who has lupus, she had many food allergies, but over time, as she continued the plant-based diet, she was able to bring up many and most of those foods back to her diet. And she's doing much, much better now. So, but yeah, they used to have certain foods. Soy never was an issue for her, but she'd have other foods that would just cause her to flare. And really interesting to see that. So Interesting um, and that's the tricky part. Is not a one that's bothering me. So I'm finding, I'm finding a lot of, and of course, these are new foods for my diet. I never encountered them. So I don't know how I'm going to react. Mm. I reacted to plenty before when I was uh, eating meat. So, um, it's, but just to show like, don't give up the plant-based diet. Don't throw out the baby with the bath water. <laughs> like they right, say. Right, exactly. I mean, You're there's exactly so right. many other things there can go wrong with a diet besides not just eating meat and dairy and uh, and eggs and um i do see it a lot lori i mean i'm i'm on uh, facebook groups plant based facebook uh, facebook groups and i see a lot of testimonials where they say you know i was not feeling well mm-hmm. i wonder i wonder so be mindful of your diet be, be mindful of what you're introducing into your um into your diet and and um, the, the the way it worked for me, I, I kept the food diary uh-huh. because um, most of my reactions are delay type. So it's not like uh, it's not like um, you know somebody's allergic to peanuts and the moment they have peanuts, their throat swells up. It's not that type. Like I would have something, I'll be perfectly fine. Maybe I get some sniffles, a rash which is kind of weird, but next morning I wake up and my face is swollen, my hands are swollen. Mm -hmm. So, and and then uh, in 24 to 48 hours, it gets worse. And then Mm -hmm. in two to three days, it goes away. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So it's a delay type. So it's really hard to, to kind of pinpoint on what, what was the food I ate. Um, the other thing is that I'm, I'm, I'm eating very basic foods. I, I don't like the extra processed stuff. I mean, I, I can't tolerate them, but um, I don't eat anything that comes with a label. I don't eat anything that comes in a box, in a can, in a jar, uh, even though it would be so much com more convenient, you know, to just buy a, a pasta sauce, mm -hmm. but it has citric acid, which mm -hmm. I'm reacting to. What you know, it, it, it's so many chemicals that are in our food system that we don't know if they're safe or not. Right, I mean, right. who would have thought citric acid is made from citrus, right? No, it's made from fermenting um, corn or um, sugar cane, I believe, with uh -huh. a GMO mold. So it's a yeast. <laughs> wow of thought right but uh, I, I looked and looked and looked in the stores and I cannot find pasta sauce without citric acid so I make my own you know oh, yeah. <laughs> I buy tomatoes and peppers and bay leaves and garlic and onions and I make my own uh -huh. but um, you know it's a chore but then again this is how I feel better I, I feel oh, my right. best you know and um eating out also is a huge challenge <laughs> i was gonna say eating out or travel must be very difficult travel is not as bad um interestingly enough last year we took a couple of road trips uh, up to northern california my daughter was going uh, with her uh, college admission and i actually ate at chipotle on the road we had the plant-based uh burrito bowl and i never reacted to it Wow. So I said, yay, one food I can eat on the road. Other than that, there is always a grocery store and you can buy fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, you know, um, um, or even crackers or, you know, I mean, there's so many, I, I travel with sweet potatoes, God bless uh, uh, Chef AJ, you know, I literally buy a bag of sweet potatoes, throw it in my trunk when I travel, and anywhere you go, pretty much every hotel room has a microwave, you know, right. and buy an avocado and some lemons, and you know, you have a meal. It's, it, it's really not that difficult to, to, to make a meal from plant-based ingredients. And let me tell you, if I go to eat out, I usually drive the waiters nuts. <laughs> you know, take that out, put that in. Can I have this? Can I have that? But at the end of the, the, the order, when my meal comes out, it's the most co colorful and it's the biggest plate. And everybody's looking at me like, you're going to eat all that? And I'm like, you bet. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Well, that's nice that you've been able to figure out some ways and strategies so you're not stressed with, with oh, travel yeah. and let it hinder your ability yeah. to get around. And then if I, because I go visit um, uh, my parents and my sister, you know, they live in Europe, so they're transatlantic flights. That's my occasion to do a fast. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I would definitely not eat the, the airport food or the airplane food, not even because they have vegetarian options, but I, I, that is like heavily processed or, or um, preserved because preservatives are other, other issues that I'm reacting to. So uh, when I do a transatlantic flight where there's my chance for a 14 hour fast, it, it's, I mean, I'm not going to die, you know, right. <laughs> you know um, drink water and um i'm usually pretty pretty good with with flights so yeah it, you know you have to make your shortcomings you have to make them work for you and right. i'm not gonna let my my problems hold me back from the life i want to live you know and um so far, so far, so good. I mean, once again, I'm super hopeful that um, uh, being uh, tested for SIBO, it's going to give me some more answers. Um, but even if it, I test negative, life goes on, you know, and uh, okay, well, at least it's not SIBO. <laughs> right. And, and uh, maybe look for something else. I mean, there's motility issues or what have you. Definitely. From the day I used Splenda, my life has never been the same. 
digestive mm -hmm. wise. So uh, that's my moment where my digestive problems started. It's when I started using Splenda. Mm -hmm. Now in hindsight, I can see clearly, you know, mm -hmm. um, even, even after I stopped using Splenda, my, my symptoms were milder, but they were always there. They wow. were always there. So um, I would never recommend anybody use any, any sweeteners. Um, I, there, there are some natural ones. I wouldn't even recommend those, you know? I mean, um, even if you will, you make a cake, a plant-based cake or, a, you know, something you want sweet, well, just use a tablespoon of sugar, you know? I mean, it's not a big deal. Once, a, once in a big, big while, you know? And of course, not every day. But um, our taste buds are so adaptable. Um, I, I, I've been cooking without salt for 10 years. Mm -hmm. My taste buds adapted to just taste that food that's in, in my meal, you know, rather than trying to... to, to all over salt or, you know, um, and that's one of my other issues. I'm super, super reactive to monosodium glutamate, MSG, which is the big monster out there. And it's coming in different names in the, on the labels. And nobody's going to put MSG on the label, you know, they're going to put yeast extract or protein isolate or uh, citric acid is actually one of them that goes in the MSG category. So um, I became a comp uh, obsessive compulsive label reader because you literally have to hunt for, uh, for those um, suspects, you know. Right. Absolutely. Well, your life depends on it, honestly. I mean, your quality of life at least. Right. And right. who knows what all that information is doing to the rest of your body as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, um, so, so with your, with all your symptoms and then you meet other people and you're, you're hearing these stories, what would be, you know, the two, three top things you would tell someone who's just beginning to investigate their symptoms like this? So like, what would be like the strategy you would encourage someone to consider? So first and foremost, know your, your body. And, and, and that's very important because I see a lot of folks who actually do exhibit the symptoms I used to have, but they're not even aware of them. Um, mm -hmm. I see puffy faces or puffy hands and they don't even connect it to the food that they had maybe yesterday or before. So know your body. That's super important. Know how you feel when you're in your best shape, so to speak. And then when you notice a reaction, you know, you notice that your face is a little bit puffier. A lot of, a lot of times I hear, oh, yeah, 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 but I ate saltier yesterday. Well, maybe, or maybe not, but you need to start paying attention to what's on your plate. You know, um, it's an, uh, the whole food plant-based diet is not just a blanket, you know, like a one, one fits all uh, kind of a, a deal. You have to personalize to see, to know, what is okay for your body and what it isn't, you know? I mean, some folks react to corn, some folks react to avocados. You need to know those things, you know? And once you notice that something is, is, is off, then go back and, and, and I would definitely recommend a food journal, especially if you have problems. Keep a food journal with symptoms. And then, because recalling is so blurry, you know, like, oh, what did I have yesterday? Or right. what's, it's really hard. But once it's written down, you can go back and go, oh, I had that, that, that day and my face wall up, or I had bloating or I had what, and the next day I had, or, so you can connect those, uh, those dots. Um, we have to help our physicians diagnose because when you go in to a gastroenterologist, they only see that exact time in front of them. They don't have this history. Like, like my GP said to me when I went back and I told her, oh my God, it was soy. She said, you know, I would have never thought about that. And you wouldn't, you know, I mean, no well, soy is one of the most reactive foods. But once again, it didn't show up on my allergy testing. Sure. But I think that's where being 
educated in nutrition, right? As a physician, right. it's so important to understand food intolerances. Right. So you're exactly right. But I, I react to almond milk. I drank almond milk for years and then suddenly every time I drank it, I would not break in a rash, but I'd be really itchy. I'm like, what is going on? I've never been allergic to foods. And sure enough, I started putting it together and now I give up you know, almond milk, I'm fine. I can eat almonds, no problem. But there's something in the almond milk, it's probably an additive or something. It has it's, to be. Yes. Did you try to make your own? No, no. My, I've got three kids running multiple things and I'm just like, no. As I, I drink have, soy milk. <laughs> I have the luxury right now that I'm alone. My daughter is at college. So I, yeah. I can make, I make a lot on my own. Like I well, make milk. And yeah. My kids are grown. I got one in medical school, one in finished college, and one in college. But the the problem is just all the other time. But I'm making the foods and stuff. But to make my own, I just drink soy milk, and I'm I'm cool with that. It's organic. And I, I did try that too. Um, of course, you you want to eat or uh, drink the organic. Uh, plant-based milks especially mm -hmm. soy especially soy no i definitely do that for sure one no 100 percent. so it ha they, they have to put some type of preservatives in because you, you can't keep it fresh for long right you know uh, it that's why i resort resorted to make everything from scratch at this point it's a lot of work let me tell right you. no it, and you're motivated because of your stomach issues and all yeah. the other things i mean but this is a really good starting insight for someone who may be like been told everything's normal. Your tests are normal. Your, 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 your endoscopy was normal. This is all in your head, you know, cause that would be like you said, people were telling you that you're crazy. It's like, no, really there, there is something going on. So, you know, you, there are people who, do have things in their head, but the majority of people don't want to just be complaining, and especially if they're young in the doctor's office. I mean, there's you have, we as physicians have to sit down and listen and go, okay, what is going on? We don't live in a natural world, so there's a lot of stuff yeah. going on that our bodies weren't meant to deal with, and you're a perfect example. But Monica, thank you so much for spending time with us and sharing your story. Oh, um, it's, it's my pleasure. I hope there is somebody who might be listening to it and, and get some insight, or uh, I'm hoping I could help somebody else out there, not absolutely. to go through what I went through. No, I think that's fabulous, and I, I really think this is going to be helpful for a lot of people, at least to know where to begin their journey right. and it may take them to a different places but at least they're like oh wow there's a connection here between what i'm putting in my mouth and how i'm feeling a couple of days later sure, definitely yeah yeah well thank you once again and we really appreciate you thank you